our seminar is going to be divided into four sections. Um, the first section is just going to be talking about what is microbiome, you know, what exactly is all this, some of the basic aspects. Um, we will then take a 10-minute break for 15 minutes at about uh, 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 10, 15, and try to come back about 10.30, um, roughly speaking. Uh, then we're going to talk about um, neurocognitive disorders and development. And um, after that, we'll take a break for lunch. Now, I'm expecting that to be about 11.45. Um, so that we'll have, whatever it is, lunch will be a whole hour after that. Then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about stress. Uh, we're going to talk about mood um, and anxiety and microbes. Um, after that, well, we're going to probably be a little anxious, depressed, and maybe a little germophobic. So we're going to come, after a break, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about, okay, why, why, how do you get over your germophobic? Why is germophobia not so great? And, and, and talk about what we now know about microbes, um, how we can use this to improve our health and, and future directions in, in ways that we can manage, manage our microbes, get to work with them, okay? All right, so our first, our first part, our microbes, ourselves, understanding the microbiome. So first of all, we need to know, oh, did I hear somebody? Oh, okay. Um, how many of you are familiar with the term microbiome? Have you heard, heard that before? You probably had. How many of you know the difference between the microbiome and the microbiota? Those terms often get thrown around um, and are used inter interchangeably. The microbiome is the genes that are, in, that are microbial genes. And this is important because, as I'll mention in a minute, this is how we know who the microbes are. So it's just, when we talk about the microbiome, it's the ones that we can measure using a, a, a gene sequencing techniques. The microbiota are the actual microbes themselves. Okay, so when we talk about microbiota, we talk about microbes, that's what it is. <clears throat> now we've known about microbes for a really long time, actually. We've known about them since the late 1600s when Anton uh, von Leeuwenhoek uh, developed the microscope. And that was the first time that we could see things close up. And um, so he, he saw them uh, apparently in 1675. He saw these little moving things on his slide uh, that he, deci he decided to call them animalcules. It's like molecules, the smallest, he considered they were the smallest unit of life, microbes. Now the story is, this is interesting, the story is, is that when he discovered the microbes, what he did is he took a, a little scraping off his teeth and then put that on a, on a slide and, and saw it. So what he would have seen would be something like, like that. I don't know, how many of you are feeling your teeth? <laughs> so we just think of dental plaque, especially back in those days, he probably had a big bunch of it back. And so but this is really kind of cool though. This is how dental plaque played a really important role in the history of our understanding of, um, the, uh, of you know, zoology and our outside world. Um, it was from dental plaque that we were able to first uh, identify the animalcules. In the brain, uh, the, the main resident micro, uh, cell is a microglia. Um, have any of you heard of microglia before? Yeah, microglia are, there's a lot of them. I, you know, we used to think that the brain didn't have, you know, it was immune privileged, didn't have any immune cells in it or anything like that. But now we know that the brain is full of immune cells. They're called microglia. And they're similar to uh, the macrophages and uh, dendritic cells. So they're, they're not exactly a monocyte lineage, though. They migrate in during development, as well do a, other, as do a bunch of other ones. And they're very important for brain development. So they, like the other cell cells, can exist in different states of activation. And so they're sort of the two um, polarization, polar, polarization points are phagocytic or inflammatory, and they could be in, in anywhere in between there. So phagocytic is sort of like when you would think of what their day job is. So um, they're just kind of cleaning up any damage. They're very important for things like learning and memory, uh, which also involves tissue remodeling. Um, on the other hand, when they become activated by certain signals, they can switch over to the inflammation mode. So instead of taking up phagocytosis, oh, by the way, uh, phagocytosis just means cell eating. And so that's what they do is they engulf garbage and things like that when they're in their phagocytic state. So that's not an inflammatory state. Um, 
when they're in their inflammatory state, though, rather than taking out the garbage, rather than cleaning things up, they, sp they spew out reactive oxygen species, pro-inflammatory cytokines, and things like that. They tend to end up causing uh, functional problems within the brain uh, because a lot of these cytokines impair me memory. Um, and so it's, it's generally not considered to be a good thing. We call that neuroinflammation. Uh, so, oops. so here's a little, uh, little cartoon of what their microglia are like when they're in their... Uh, phagocytic state, so they're, they're cleaning up things that might, like amyloid that might be junk. Um, they also release growth factors, including uh, BDNF and NT3. These are um, growth factors you may have heard about that are associated with learning and memory. Um, and some other, these are kind of regulatory anti-inflammatory cytokines. Um, they also trigger repair, so they're working on healing and things like that. So. Um, their day job really is just to keep the brain kind of humming along, um, keeping it healthy, um, allowing, really allowing um, learning and memory. And if you think about it, um, when we're learning something, we have to make new connections between our neurons, and we have to lose some of the old ones. So what happens to the old ones? Well, the microglia come along and clean that right up. That's what they're doing. So they're very, very important for normal function. Now, aging and neurodegeneration is associated with the microglia switching over their phenotype into the more inflammatory mode. So in this case, you know, they're not cleaning up if there's any damage in any of these like uh, misfolded proteins like Alzheimer's disease. Um, they're not cleaning that up. They're just putting out these cytokines and they're causing damage. Um, so this is where, this is sort of what one of these is sort of phenotypic switching, this modulated you know, phenotypic, uh, uh, phenotypic state of these microglia is what we consider really important for um, microbes to control. They, we, now that we know that microbes can control this, this is an important potential mechanism by which microbes can influence the brain. All right. So here we have a picture of um, sort of the healthy, healthy CNS, um, where you have healthy interactions between the gut and the brain. We have a healthy barrier. We have um, healthy microbes or, uh, healthy microbes here in the gut, um, and we have um, nice things going on. Um, in stress and disease, though, we have issues with the gut barrier. Um, things are getting across that shouldn't be getting across. Um, pathobiont overgrowth um, and promoting the leaky gut. Okay. So. Okay. Make sense? Okay, good. So, in summary, we all have a distinct population of microbes. They are um, overlapping with people that we live with, uh, overlap with people that we know, but they are individual enough that we can be identified by them, which is really, I think it's, I think that's really interesting. Um, I think one of the things that I think is particularly interesting is um, the whole idea of their, they pick us, the, the genetic components of all this, especially when we're thinking that, that you know, the way in which they influence us and the sort of um, we are them, they are us thing, is that there is something about us that are attracting them. Um, commensal bacteria are particularly important. They're absolutely important. There may be special ones. We still don't know exactly which ones to be able to give recommendations, but we do know that, for instance, lactobacillus species and some bifidobacteria, we'll talk about this later, um, do seem to be really regulatory, and they do seem to be associated with, with keeping pathobionts or some of the bacteria that might be a little bit aggressive in control. Um, so again, to, to bring back the, the kind of playground idea, you know, if we want to be healthy, we want to stay healthy, we need to have our microbes playing nice together. And they need to be playing nice with our immune cell. Um, so the, the critical issue here is balance. So there really are not very many really bad bacteria, a few, but the real issue is if they're in balance. Um, okay. And one thing I didn't mention also, which is interesting, in terms of the pathobionts or some of the bad ones, the example of some of the, some of the ones that we often think are bad, Helicobacter pylori um, and Helicobacter species. We usually tend to look at them and we think that they're, they're kind of bad, right? 
If you look in um, the microbiomes of people who have asthma and, and allergies, you tend to find that their species are low. And we don't know what they might be doing, but they seem to be playing a role maybe with tolerance. We don't know um, for, for skin things. So it's, my, it's kind of a nice example of you know, not, not looking at these, these t certain types of bacteria and thinking, oh, it's a bad bacteria. It needs to be in balance. Underlines the idea that it needs to be in balance. Um, it's also important to remember that our, our interactions with our microbes are bidirectional. You know, we affect them, they affect us. Um, and so things like our stress levels, our diet, a lot of sort of modifiable features um, we can exploit to be able to work well with our microbes when we're trying to stay healthy.